At what point can the SEC or DOJ or FBI subpoena account information KYC from, say, Binance? And do they have to give it up? Uh, so at any point, so subpoena is more of like a legal term. But so usually it goes along the lines of like something like this. Government agency will hit up you know, one of the exchanges and be like, do you have information on this matter? And the exchange will say, uh, you know, we're happy to work with you because we want to keep making money and operating in your jurisdiction. Can you narrow the scope and make this a uh, super narrow request? And more likely than not, they will give up the information. So I don't even think they need to be subpoenaed. So couldn't they, if they wanted to figure out if Godwell is Richard, couldn't they just ask Binance or Kraken? Well, that's the thing, right? So if you mined Bitcoin, which Richard claims to have done, you got that Bitcoin anonymously, you put that Bitcoin into the Ethereum ICO, which was no KYC, and then uh, coins were generated on your behalf. So it's possible that, you know, to date, no one could identify who the Hex Godwell is. But, who is it? But he like, has... Well, but he has off ramp. The hex god will has off ramp. Yeah, I've seen him off ramp before. That's interesting. You you've you've had like the ether scan transactions on that. One day it was when he had like a, it was actually right after he sent that money to or sent that hex to Bank X. He was uh, liquidating Ethereum. He like he look he sent like three thousand Ethereum to Kraken or something. Really? Okay. Well, there you go. I mean, there you go. That's what I believe the whole case will hinge on. What year was that? Because there wasn't KYC until like 2017. I think it was recently. You got to find the, the the wallet that sent out that hex to, uh, I mean, it'd be probably pretty easy to find it on Etherscan. How much was it? 800 million hex or something? Something. Oh, like it was it? hex. Wait, wait. It was hex he cashed out or Ethereum? The same wallet that uh, he sent that e-hex to bank out and i think that a similar wallet or the same wallet because that was around like june 6 when the market was crashing so i think he dumped it are, are you talking about the bank x ico from like 2018 19 or whatever no no the a bank couple X months sacrifice. ago remember there was the whole as soon as kind of like the ex px community split and uh all that ehex was given to the bank x sacrifice and it kind of was the poison pill for ehex wait so wait wait so i saw rumors about this on twitter but i i, was, I didn't understand so someone sent like 800 million ehex to godwell did so it was basically a, like a poison pill you know because up until that point everyone was like speculating oh you know Hex on Ethereum, still on Ethereum, so it can do well. And then after that wrench got thrown in, you know, that's when we saw the ratio split. And then Richard tweeted right after it was like, oh, the market's decided, which, you know, seemed pretty coordinated, but, you know, who's to say? And then it also kind of gave Godwell whatever, like 80, 90% of the share of, of Bank X, but they never really came up with anything. Um, and then from then on, you know, if the Bank X founder wanted to sell his hex, he was just going to sell the price down. Who, who is the Bank X founder? Look at this. It's crazy. Yeah, is it uh, an anonymous well person? No, he no, didn't no. He's in the community. No, people knew of him and he was doing other, oh, Lance. Yeah, people talk about him. Yeah, and I suppose he was doing other kind of shady kind of rug pulls or things that never really launched um so it's kind of sus that godwell would sack for it but you know like richard said godwell has bought other kind of shit tokens yeah no i see it i i see it here not the wallet but i just see it on twitter uh it seems you know it's consensus this person sent 800 million hex to was that like a few million us dollars yeah it was like eight million on paper but you know you can't take that out of the liquidity oh godwell huh so you think that means the god the godwell is not richard yeah i mean i asked some other ogs and they're like there's no way just based on the fact that whatever richard would shit was shitting on ethereum and never sacrificed which i don't know like i don't ever put jedi mind checks past richard but uh based on the shit coins people were saying that richard would never buy you know whether they know each other or not the other thing is godwell might be i mean sure i don't know i mean on paper he's got billions of dollars worth of hex but maybe he got frustrated that he was never able to sell it or he just wanted people to go over to pulse chain because that's where actual liquidity is to pump that more so that maybe he could eventually exit some i've never really seen him sell 
but OG Faraday just killing it right now. <laughs> OG Faraday, man, he's MVP right now. He replied to the chat, uh, Godwell 22 2023 crack and deposit address. Let's see. I hope you're listening, Richard. I hope you're ahead of all this, man. Because damn, it looks like what is this? Five seven deposit address. So yeah, it looks like a bunch of ETH was. If this is correct, it looks like a bunch of ETH was off ramped of Kraken. How did you figure this out, OG Faraday, so quickly? What a what a guy. Who is this OG Faraday? I asked him who he is. I asked him if he was Richard. He said he's not Richard. Really amazing. I love OG Faraday's anonymity. He doesn't want to come up and, and talk. He's just the head researcher of the operation. So it looks like uh, we have, as of 22 days ago, 250 ETH was off ramped, um, if this is correct, to through, through Kraken. And then 100 days ago, it was like 3,000 ETH. Look at that. The Hex Godwell is not Richard, we think. Okay. But what does this Kraken KYC say? So what does this Kraken KYC say? So we need to figure that out. ASAP. I think it would be pretty stupid if that was a Richard Hart. But then even if it's not him, it's like, do you know Richard Hart? Do you have any, you know, relation to him and on that? I was just wondering, now, like, how long have you been in this community? It sounds like, in my opinion, everybody's just doxing a lot of stuff that they shouldn't be talking about right now. You're probably just a fed, in my opinion. I am absolutely not a fed. And, like, this is all going to come out anyway. Trying to figure out, like, whether or not this is an investable asset. What you're saying is, like, we should not be talking about this. And we should just all, like, shut up and go pray. Like, no, that's not how crypto works. Crypto is open source. You put it up. You you have everyone point at it, look at it, analyze it. And if it's, if it's crap, like, I'm sorry. Like, you're out. And that's how crypto works. And that's the magic of it. It's all open source you know this is how the covid response should have been should have been open open source use all the scientists all over the world decentralized figure it out get to the bottom of it not like a top-down operation absolutely not a fed i'm sorry like you're offended by like what we're talking about i'm not offended i was here for the first conversation trying today. to provide a legal analysis and get more facts for the legal analysis so here we're talking about the godwell and we see that he's off-ramping uh, that's a very interesting piece of information that you know is a uh, very important to decide whether this is an investable asset or not so you don't have to be here if you don't want to be here and you want to criticize this and call me a fed and i'm saying things that you don't think i should be saying because like they're shady or whatever and that it's the same thing feel free to leave if not you know feel free to stay Wh whatever you want I, I was just wondering like can we actually get some intel on you like like what, what brought you into this community and what, what brought you into like wanting to look at this i am an investor in the space and pulse chain community treasury is well over a hundred million dollars it's one of the biggest treasuries in the whole space hex previously went to the moon you know it's retreated but it's still up significantly from the adoption amplifier and oh, is this an investable asset it's down you know over 90 percent you know you want to buy blood and sell when there's a party so it's currently blood is there going to be a party that's what i'm trying to figure out is there going to be a party i think a lot of other people want to know that too is there going to yeah. be a Party. I think anyone with even a small handful of coins or a small investment in Pulse Network right now would be interested to just be in the conversation. I think that's why most of us are here. I think a lot of people want to know what's going on. You know, Richard is like an amazing character on the internet and he's gone like kind of silent more or less. We're not getting like major updates. He's posting like his own his own legal, which I really don't like. I think you should have a lawyer doing that. It's actually like quite concerning that he's posting that. Um, it's like, is he trying to represent himself? If you're going to do it publicly facing, you want to have like a really powerful lawyer doing it. And, you know, I, I used to love like reading, reading Richard's tweets, what's going on. He has like a lot of interesting self-help stuff, a lot of interesting longevity stuff. He's just like an interesting character on the internet. And like, we don't really hear from him much anymore. So, you know, just trying to extract as much information as possible. Uh, I don't know who the last guy was up, G-Man, but I'm a Richard Hart supporter as a person because I know Richard Hart as a person. Because uh, my whole thing is I, like, manage YouTubers and stuff. You go to my you go to my page, you'll see me defending BitBoy to the very end, which I know probably upsets people. But I've never really been a very big Hex person, uh, but I've been a very big Richard Hart person because he's always treated me and everyone else with respect. And that guy that just came up here, I can understand being a Richard Hart supporter, but I don't understand trolling a space you know just because you like someone i like richard hart very very much doesn't mean that you can't question and analyze their behavior to try and figure out what the hell's going on mostly in a sense of longevity research i i think that's very powerful i think it's the biggest donation in in the history of longevity research so just on that front alone i think it's important that 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 research might save you or your family one day that 27 million <laughs> biggest thing about this is are criminal charges going to be brought or not i don't think sec charges are a big deal you can't go to jail you know most likely settle just because 
SEC keeps losing, I don't think they'll want to go to a jury trial. So it's really the question to me is, are criminal charges going to be brought? I don't think criminal charges are going to be brought for Pulse Chain just because it's not like he stole the money and went and bought Louis Vuitton. He said, you have no expectations. This is a political sacrifice, and it could be viewed as marketing. So those three arguments, I think, really push back against it being uh, criminal, especially um, it's in writing in the Pulse Chain and Pulse X terms of service. Now, I mean, do we all think I that Richard wasn't rich enough to buy Louis Vuitton in Rolexes before Hex? I'm just curious. If yeah, no, of course, but it's, I think he's a billionaire personally, but it's, did he take the money and do that? But then even if he did, there's a bunch of arguments. So like, I just don't think it's that strong of a criminal case against him. But on the other side of that, they do charge him with fraud and the SEC complaint and securities fraud is, you know, a felony, but I just don't think it's going to happen. There's also an argument, is it a, is it a security or not? 50-50 at best that the SEC is going to find him, be able to find him guilty in court, which means if it's 50-50 at best, civilly is it going to be prosecuted criminally maybe it does say it in the complaint fraud and securities fraud is illegal but whereas the hex manipulation i i think that has a much better chance of a criminal charge being brought and then it's like the hex godwell off-ramping was was the was the token that the adoption amplifier was that manipulated i mean just kind of basing it off of image right it's like we didn't really see this side of Richard or if you go back and look at who he was in 2018 2019 like sure he was younger but like it wasn't the same flashiness there wasn't that much money on the wrist or the watches you know like it was it was a little bit more humble so it's like was he mining all that Bitcoin I don't know you know did he really so he did openly say and that's the thing like you have to watch all the YouTube videos to understand what's happening he did openly say that he was engaging in this behavior because he wants to bring as much money to crypto and longevity space as possible and the humble people don't get the attention on the internet it's the people that are you know flashing the private jets and the fancy watches and the cars and whatever else that get you know hundreds of thousands to millions of followers and richard i believe now has over 300,000 followers yeah so whereas yeah, before right. he did this i don't think he had that many i think it's grown exponential in that so he did say that this was a marketing ploy yeah hey, i don't understand why they would uh, the sec would level fraud allegations against against him in the in the uh, complaint right but then would not go and file a criminal referral with the Department of Justice because if they don't go after him criminally right couldn't he sue them for like defamation or something for even accusing him of, of fraud right really good question so suing the government is never like a, a good strategy although DCG just did that in one DCG did just do that in one but it's generally not a good strategy very hard to win they spent like hundreds of millions of dollars on legal to make that happen yeah so it's a really good point but then my point back to you is why didn't the DOJ bring that fraud charge at the same time the SEC did it? Just like they did with Arthur Hayes, just like they did with Martin Shkreli and whoever else. Well, I was in that um, I was in that Twitter space with Mario and uh, Farmer Bro Martin, and he said, like Benjamin mentioned earlier, that what they will do is a lot of times wait until the first uh, court appearance and then. Um, you know, uh, serve them with the criminal papers. Like, we'll see. But for the, so for the pulse chain, it literally says that, I, you're right. I, I just think that the evidence is like really strong to not bring it. But again, it's a subjective thing uh, based on the whims of like a few individuals in the government. Are we going to bring this charge or are we not? Uh, it could go away. It could go either way. I just think if you're a prosecutor and you see in writing no expectations, and then there's videos of him saying he's doing this for marketing, uh, just find it hard to see that. But again, it does say fraud. So it, it could, could happen. I just don't, I just don't. I just don't think it's so slam dunk. I don't think the securities case is slow, so slam dunk. Paul's chain well, sacrifices basically gave him the money, and he's, you know, he said, "You have no expectations of going to do whatever." I, I yeah, want. I, I don't think he's guilty of fraud by any stretch of the imagination. I just don't see the logic in accusing him in the SEC complaint, but then not filing a criminal referral with Department of Justice. So yeah, they could file the criminal referral, but then the DOJ has to bring the case. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's I, true. I, I so you're basically saying that you think that a criminal charge is going to be brought. And if a criminal charge is brought, like, we're putting more zeros on the price of these coins. Well, they never accused Coinbase or um, EOS or anybody like that of fraud in their complaints, did they? You know what? Let's check the EOS. I don't know if there ever was a formal EOS SEC complaint. I think they just settled. It's a really good question. So for the gentleman that asked, like, what am I doing here? Why do I care? Like, that's a really good point you just brought up. So let's see. Uh, block one. In the matter of block one. Cease and desist. Okay. Violations. See no fraud here. Cease and desist. 24 million. I don't know if there was actually a complaint against block one. 
I think it was just a settlement. Yeah, it doesn't look like there was ever an actual complaint. It looks like it was just a settlement. Uh, how about the Telegram case? Telegram to return 1.2 billion SEC complaint Telegram. Okay, here we go. Let's see if there's fraud in this one. Nope, no fraud in this one. So this is an interesting point. Who said this? Hedron or Iceman? Iceman? Yeah. This is good. This is why we do this. Claim for relief against Telegram. Violations of Securities Act. No fraud. This is a pretty good analysis we've done. So we basically see in crypto that the SEC did not charge Telegram, EOS, Coinbase, XRP with fraud. They have charged Richard Hart with fraud. Those cases, criminal proceedings were never brought. The Martin Shkreli, they said that the DOJ could be waiting for him to arrive in court to bring criminal charges. But you know, that doesn't make a lot of sense either, right? Because the, the November 28th court date is a telephone hearing or something, right? He doesn't even have to appear in person for that. Well, he so, hasn't been you know. served yet. So this November okay. 28th date, he has not been served yet. He has not declared counsel yet. Let's see, Richard Hart, 28th. Yeah, I don't even think he's declared his counsel yet. I don't think he's been served. So, you know, if he hasn't been served, I, I don't know. Can that even proceed? So this November 28th thing, I don't, I don't know that's right. For Kraken in um, the EU, I'm almost positive there's no KYC for one. Huh, and look at that. Look at that. This is why we do this. This is why we do this. Wow. For an unlimited amount, like you could deposit 3,000 ETH and just withdraw all of it. It, no KYC. Well, it's, it's the same thing as, as Binance used to be. So Binance, I think, was two Bitcoin well, a day. Yeah, but Binance is the same thing. No, Binance was unlimited prior. But when they switched over to Binance.us, that's when restrictions, they, I don't know, they, they laid whatever restrictions they had. Huh. Wow. So I know, I don't think and, Binance was unlimited. And, oh, it was at one point. But and even if so, like, what what is your case if it, it is tied back? Like, I still don't see a case on, like, how that could affect anything anyway. It's really a matter of, so for the manipulation claim, which I think is the biggest one. Yeah, but what what, what manipulation? Like, you can't buy your own coin? Is that illegal? No, no. It's, so it's set, the SEC accuses him of adoption amplifier recycling the ETH, that uh, over 90% of the ETH deposited for the hex adoption amplifier which is like the token generation event was recycled by richard and his people so like 90 percent of the deposits weren't real but that that is obviously on chain you can literally see that that wallet sacrificed so that doesn't make any sense this is for the adoption amplifier gotcha okay all right no now i understand yeah yeah okay are you talking about pulse chain or hex trading on the open market no no no, no. i was talking about pulse chain yeah yeah so pulse chain they don't accuse of manipulation it uh hex uh, in, in, in my opinion, I think the Pulse Chain case is a civil thing. They could bring criminal because they do accuse securities fraud in there. But I just think it's going to be so hard to prove because the jury is going to be showing a piece of paper that says you had no expectations. And then they're going to play a video saying, oh, 10,000 X. And then the jury is going to see the paper that's going to say no expectations. So it's, it's going to be very hard for a jury... 12 people on the jury to all agree that he's guilty but they do accuse securities fraud which is you know a felony so and then there's the manipulation side of of the hex so to your point about how could you like you can't buy your own coin you're right so you would have to prove for purchasing it on the open market like intent to essentially corner the market and manipulate the price and intent is very difficult to prove but this is for the 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 hex ico that they charge so also right, that point. So crack and KYC. Do they have KYC in Europe? So the manipulation. It, so basically, what they were saying with the recycling was that he sat there and collected Ethereum all year, and then recycled it to create the OA. Right. Uh, they're saying in the the hex adoption amplifier token generation event that the ETH that was put into that contract, the government accuses them of collecting 2 million Ether in that contract, essentially the HEX token generation event. And they're saying that over 90% of that 2 million ETH were quote unquote recycling transactions directed by Hart or other insiders, which enabled Hart or other insiders to gain control of large number of HEX tokens while creating the false impression of significant trading volume and organic demand for HEX tokens. I mean, yeah, if they can prove if they can prove that, then then yeah, that would be that would be bad. I mean, I don't think if they can prove that actually happened and that that uh, that would be a huge problem and that would so that's that, a that's a factual inquiry like exclusively yes obviously it'd be a huge problem but to date you know crypto twitter hasn't been able to unveil this now crypto twitter does not have capacity to go to an exchange and say show me whose wallet this is that deposited all this money so like we'll see